to Cricketbat Info. It's Mark here. I know it's been five months since I've reviewed a Cricketbat and I've had a plenty sitting here waiting for me to do it. Um, I did the raffle draw in December and then I spent January putting together April's uh, bedroom. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go back to the channel and have a look. We did a, a raffle for a Cricketbat that B3 donated, a Maverick, and uh, that was one. And there was also um, donations given by people. All in all, we raised 2000 Australian dollars and that paid for her um, wardrobe, which I'll put a photo up, and also paid for a repair to her car because um, I just couldn't cover it. Um, I'm not a YouTube star. I don't make a lot of money out of this. It's just a hobby. Um, so today what we've got for you comes from Bill at Bill's underscore cricket underscore bats on Instagram. And it is this bat here, which I'll show you right now. Let's put that down for a sec. We have a screaming cat. Finally, this is a screaming cat professional. It's obviously been used. Um, these haven't been made for a while and it's in pretty good nick. Um, so we're gonna have a good look at that. And I'm gonna give you all the information I can. And this is because I've gone back to the Wayback Machine and I found the website. This is a a snapshot that was done on the 25th of January 2014. So we're looking back seven years. Um, you can see Julie and Millie Champ there. This is probably the last update that the Wayback Machine captured. After that, he tried to do a bat making school and that wasn't successful and he just sort of disappeared off the face of social media. Um, I don't know what is happening with uh, Julian Millichamp, uh, if anybody's got any information, you're welcome to put it in the comments. Comments are there for you to discuss and also ask questions. I'm not an expert on Screaming Cat by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there are many of you who know the story a lot better than me. Uh, what we've also, I've just captured a few things here. So it says here, as a 16 year old apprentice, Julian entered the rare trade of pod shaving. His mentor and master bat maker, the late John Newbury, expected only the finest quality with an exceptional eye for detail. Julian continues John's impeccable standards as he's been a leading figure in cricket bat development over the last three decades. So it says a lot about John Newbury. He was the son of Len Newbury, the person who was at Grey Nichols and designed the GN100 scoop. Uh, but they couldn't actually make it when he made the design. It was made much later. You know, the, the name Newbury was synonymous with fine bat making in the UK, along with many other bat makers. People like uh, Tim Keeley and his brother, Andrew Kembler at Salix, uh, and a few others uh, were trained by John Newbury uh, before Tim Keeley took over as the bat maker for uh, Newbury, and, and later they did branch out and then Newbury went offshore. And I don't, don't know who makes for Newbury now, uh, but um, obviously the Keeleys have got their own brand called Keely Cricket. 1987, Julian, along with Jonathan Hall, established Millie Champ and Hall, a brand which was almost, uh, which became the most sought after and desirable cricket equipment used by club cricketers and test players around the world. So you know that brand. I've never reviewed a Millie Champ and Hall, just putting that out there. In 1994, Millie Champ and Hall Australia became part of Puma Australia. With Julian's unique skills, they started a remarkable success story. And you've seen the Puma Gilchrist. That was a bat shape designed by Millie, uh, by Julian. So that review I've, I'll put at the end of the thing and I'll leave it in the links. In 2005, Julian embarked on his most challenging enterprise, creating his new brand Screaming Cat. Now the thing Screaming Cat was something that John Newbury used to say. Uh, if he picked up a bat and tapped it up and it was a real you know, cracker, he'd call it a Screaming Cat. With the emphasis on fundamental roots, 100% uh, hand making and grading, tailor made cricket bats direct to cricket players. Julian only uses the finest imported willow for all his cricket bats combined with 30 years of experience. Ensures that your exclusive Screaming Cat cricket bat will serve you well into the future. That's what's happening with this bat. So the bat we've got in front of us today, going to the bats here, is the one at the top, the Series 1. So uh, this one says it was uh, the largest volume of any cricket bat on the market because it's a pro shape. 
and choice of professional players features extra thick tapered edge, which by today's standards, no, uh, but it was then. Massive middle and provides perfect pickup and balance, which we'll look at the weight. I'm not going to do a pickup test because I can't actually stand up properly at the moment. My legs are too weak, uh, but I have done a, a, a weight test on it the second time I've filmed this. Subtle concave through the profile, one latex grip, which we don't have the original grip on, and weight range 210 to 215. Um, I'll leave the links to this in the description, so you're welcome to go through the Wayback Machine and, and have a look at what Screaming Cat was. Um, just going back here, pricing. So the pricing of these bats in 2014 was $725, which is like, you know, that is big money. Um, you know, elite grade, which probably what everybody would have done, that was still a lot of money, but you know, you were getting a handmade cricket bat by probably the best um, bat maker going around at that stage, uh, Julian Millichamp. Oh, there was something here in uh, Frequently Asked Questions. It says here about the bats that every single piece of English willow was individually graded prior to being handcrafted according to how it plays, not on what it looks like. So that's important to see here when we're looking at this, this bat. Um, there'd probably be much nicer bats that you've seen as far as willow, but this is what happens with quality bat making where they're actually grading based on what the um, bat is, not what actually it looks like. Those, you're not gonna make a lot of runs with a nice looking bat that, that is a plank. So you'd be better off having a nice looking bat that actually goes. So getting back to this, I'll just uh, shove myself down in the corner here. So actually I'll make that a bit smaller things properly because my uh, shoulders both got impinged while I was in hospital for nearly a month. Um, lots of testing and, and things like that. Uh, that's the bag. So, you know, nothing special here, um, but there was a bag full length and that's obviously the symbol there. Those days, you know, a lot of, he had really good quality softs. Um, I did actually like the soft that I got, but uh, you know, people weren't really investing that much in bags and things like that. That became an extra that you that sort of got added after. So here we go. This is uh, the bat. I'll show it. Oh, that's interesting. So holding that up there, uh, you can see here, we've got really nice grains. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten grains across the front. This bat is used. You can see water damage uh, in the bottom where it's been tapped down. So that water seeps in there. And, you know, if it's got some mud or whatever that comes in through the grains, as long as that's looked after, then it should be uh, not an issue. Uh, we've got a little scratch there. Um, scuff sheet has gone on. It, it does look like a cleanup has been uh, attempted on it. I think that this one was cleaned up by JK, uh, Jack Conus uh, Cricket, here locally in Adelaide. Um, so if that's the case, it was a good job. It's a while since I've seen uh, Bill, he's sort of left this bat with me in December and I haven't got to it yet. So five months. It's hard for me to remember a lot of conversations. And that's the profile. So looking at it there, it's a really nice profile. You can see that pro shape right through the, the length of the blade, um, graduating down into a fine toe. It's quite thick, uh, decent, really high spine at the handle, coming into a really nice thick oval handle here and semi oval at the top, almost round, but semi oval we'll say. Um, the stickers themselves, textured, not embossed. Uh, so that was sort of something that came later with a lot of bat makers, uh, but nice, nice quality. Uh, you can see here a little bit of the splice has opened up through the sticker. So there's probably a little bit of movement. It's probably a well-used cricket bat. We've got a tiny bit of uh, damage here where the ball has struck just the very top and uh, just bent that top back. But those because those shoulders are nice and thick, that hasn't really damaged the bat whatsoever. So I don't know actually what year this was made in. The, the website was last, you know, they last made bats in 2014. Um, there is stamps up the top here. So I've got an AG 
and an A. If anybody knows what those stamps mean, uh, then you can let me know. So A, G and A. This is not the original grip, obviously. Um, the thing that I do like about underneath the handle is it's got a unique insert pattern. Now, I'm pretty sure one of the hussies, uh, David, or I think it was David, would actually keep the handle and get the blade replaced because he liked the uh, Millie Champion, his, his Millie Champion Hall, sorry, his screaming cat handle, um, probably Puma then or something like that. So uh, that's one of the folklores that go around. But one insert, so really stiff handle, strong. Um, and good quality binding. I don't really want to do too much on that. Um, now the finishing itself, obviously used bat, so we're going to have slight uh, imperfections and things like that. It's, it looks like it's pretty. It's been well looked after, to be honest. Um, got a little bit of a, you know, knock around in the bags up here. Um, now, if you look online, you can still see the Screaming Cat um, YouTube channel. And he actually did a lot of back maintenance videos. Um, and I'm free to say that that I looked at a lot of those uh, when I was trying to learn how to uh, repair bats myself. So it's good information. Uh, it's interesting in one of them that he would say on a, on a natural bat to oil it four or five times. Uh, and that would be half a capful each time. So whereas James Labor, Labor and Wood, who was his protege, says, no, it just puts too much weight in the bat. So, you know, you can see those differences there. With modern bats, if you put a sleeve on it like this, there's no reason to uh, put so much oil because you, you, all you're doing with the oil is you're trying to seal the back and stop the moisture from coming, from leaving. And it also crystallizes on the back, gives you a, a nice sheen and, and sort of locks in all that moisture. Um, the wood itself will only take in moisture when it's growing not afterwards. Um, things like water damage actually takes out uh, moisture. So like, as far as the grains are going, this is definitely a grade one. You've got your slither of heartwood running down the right hander's inside edge. It's on the first two grains. Um, grains are nice and straight and they're nice and straight running through the actual bat. So we'll just check that from the other side they're a little bit. Uh, crooked on that side. You can see the shape there. We'll just put the gauge on that. So looking at that, you've got a little bit of height given away there. So probably a couple of mil at the top, a lot given away at the edges. So they're not reaching the, the 41 mil or whatever it's 41 mil. So they're not reaching that. They're about a centimetre short. So they're probably about three centimetres. And the middle position is dead smack in the middle. Um, so you've got a lot of wood right throughout that hitting area. So this should be a nice long middle, fairly even. And that's a lot to do with the shape of the edges too. So they're not they're not peaking anywhere to give you a really concentrated middle. They're, they're just sort of all the way through. Let's do some measurements, uh, which is if you're new to the channel. This is something we do do. Um, so we'll start in the middle. 30 up here at the shoulder. 12.9 down here at the toe. 20.6, which is pretty good. Middle of the toe. Remember, these are rounded faces. 28.4 and top of the splice really thick 42.5 I will just have another look at that camber uh, with the thing here because I didn't actually comment on that so that's a five mil camber and you can see the gaps towards each edge so over here so we're looking at about a seven or an eight mil camber so much more traditional rounded face uh, we'll measure the spine We've got 67.6, big, big spine. Just measure up here at the top of the handle just to give you an idea of just how thick they were. So 40 
at the top here. So some of the bats I've seen through uh, come through. A particular one I always pick on is the Uzi Players Edition, probably not the current one. And that was like 31 around here and, and very narrow down here. Uh, I think a lot of that's to do with weight saving. 35.8 as far as the uh, sides to create that oval shape. Now, as far as pickup of the bat goes, I tested it out um, with, you know, sort of holding onto the walking stick and then just putting it down quickly, picking up the bat and we will give this away. No, I'm not going to give it away. It's not mine to give away. And these are worth a fair bit of money. It'd be interesting to hear what you think this uh, sort of bat would be worth um, or, you know, better condition ones. Uh, a lot of people sort of talk about these types of bats being towards two thousand, definitely over a thousand. Uh, so I'm weighing that in at 211 and it felt like 210 in my hands. I'll just bring that into the center, make sure it's dead. Yep, 211. It definitely picks up a lot better than that. Uh, so that's really good. Let's move this aside and we'll do the tap up. Uh, very light because, yeah, I don't really want to damage it, but you should be able to hear most of what's actually going on with the bat. I'll hold it this way. So it's a used bat plating, and you can see right there in a low position, we're already getting some action. Mid low, plenty of action there. Mid's going really well. Mid high, and even high. So the whole length of the blade is going to perform, but really go its best right there. And uh, yeah, it's a stunning bat. Really, really nice shape. And it, look, you know, this is what player shapes are these days, you know, bigger edges, but they are that. Uh, but this is a really, really nice profile. Uh, and I can understand why people uh, love their screaming cats um, because they're just really good quality. That is just a stunning bat. So I will be doing um, more reviews as I can. I'm sort of on a return to work program at the moment, so I can't spend more than uh, four hours sitting down and I've got to take breaks every half an hour. So it's just one of those things. I'm feeling better. I'm filming. So thank you very much for joining me on the channel. And uh, hopefully I can cut this, uh, edit this pretty quickly. I'm not going to do too much with it because I really just don't have the uh, time. I do have some B-roll that I'll put over the top. And I do have plenty of other bats sitting in the bedroom to review that the owner has been patient with me for five months to let me hang on to them. And uh, I will be getting all those, those videos done. So thank you to the owners like Bill. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.